kids podcast. <laughs> you can go slow. A kids podcast about. Hello, my name is Ari, and I help produce this show you're listening to. I wanted to take a moment to say thank you for being here with us. It means so much that you're choosing to spend your time listening to this show and hearing what we've made for you. We truly couldn't do this without you. So I hope you enjoy this episode. The Cleveland baseball team known for over a century as the Indians is getting a name change for the 2022 season. The reason behind the decision is worth noting. On Friday, July 23rd, 2021, Major League Baseball and the Cleveland baseball team announced it would stop using the team name, the Indians, and replace it with the Guardians. The team has used the name since 1915, accumulating over a hundred years of fandom and support in association with the name. But many indigenous individuals have been calling it out for decades against the depiction of Native Americans as mascots for sports teams. If you follow sports at all, play sports like baseball, basketball, or football, or play sports video games, it's very likely you've seen a depiction of a Native American in the logo of a team. Often these individuals are male, their skin is red to reddish brown, and they are wearing feathers in their hair, and they are carrying a weapon. Hold that image in your mind as it comes to you. We're going to work with it in a minute. But first... A note on mascots. The purpose of mascots is to give fans and teams an image or character that can distinguish them from other teams. Often the animal or character selected is meant to represent some characteristic the team or school shares, like strength or bravery or cunning. Other times, the mascot is a connection to a piece of the city or school's history or historical figure. The mascot's role on the field is to help drum up support for the team, while the mascot's logo on a shirt or hat or other apparel is meant to signal to others your support for a team, often through an image alone. I live outside of Baltimore in Maryland, and our teams are the Baltimore Orioles, a Major League Baseball team, and the Baltimore Ravens, a National Football League team. The Orioles are named after our state bird, which is orange and black. Even just wearing an orange shirt can signal to others that you support the team. Imagine that! Just a color is all it takes. The Ravens are named after a famous poem by a poet from Baltimore named Edgar Allan Poe. In fact, we have three Ravens who act as mascots for the NFL team, and each takes its name from the poets, Edgar, Allan, and Poe. Often, folks will wear clothing with just the logo of the raven's head, and you'll know immediately that they support the team. Mascots are meant to drive team spirit, but sometimes mascots are selected without sensitivity toward whom they might offend. America as a nation has long struggled with its relationship with the people who were first on this land. And while history looks fondly on the times when Native peoples were honored, teachings of history often overlook or minimize the impact of colonialism or the setting up of colonies in what is now called the United States of America. Our nation has introduced diseases that have wiped out huge portions of Native populations. Our nation has forced indigenous people off their land and claimed it as our own. Our nation has separated generations of native people with the establishment of residential schools, religious schools intent to, quote, kill the Indian, save the man, end quote. The history our nation teaches in its schools places native people as historical, existing back then, rather than recognizing indigenous individuals as descending from the people first on this land, but also existing now, today, in every part of the country. I share this not to make you or any listener feel in any way like you personally have caused harm by your decisions or your actions, but rather to challenge you to consider how choices that seem okay to one may be causing harm to another. 
At whose expense is the decision being made? Who suffers or who is made to feel smaller or of less worth by the decision? We have another NFL team that plays around our area in nearby Washington, D.C. The Washington team has long received criticism not only for their team name, which is a racist slur against Native people, and their logo, which includes all of the stereotypes mentioned above, but also for the behavior of their fans. Some fans at this stadium come to games wearing feathered headdresses. Some paint their faces to look like war paint. Some carry fake tomahawks. Some clap their hand over their mouth in a fake call meant to mimic or stereotype native warriors. And huge swaths of the stadium attendees sing a song together while making a chopping gesture with their arms. But are these actions in support of the football team harmless? Or are they being done without consideration to the harm they may be causing? Native activists have been fighting since the 1960s for the retirement of Indian mascots. These mascots have team names, they argue, that perpetuate harmful stereotypes of Native people and are offensive to Native people today. Organizations such as Change the Mascot have documented the ongoing efforts to replace harmful stereotypes incorporated into mascots and logos. Change the Mascot recently celebrated the Washington team's decision to ban fans wearing headdresses and face paint to games, citing in a tweet thread on August 6, 2021, quote, By prohibiting fans from misappropriating and mocking Native culture, the Washington football team is demonstrating common decency and common sense, end quote. That same team is going to be changing their team name soon. Consider how it might feel to see yourself or a representation of yourself, your family, or your community via these mascots or logos. A study published in the Race, Ethnicity, and Education Journal on June 8, 2020, found that Native youth and their well-being, specifically their mental health, is affected by the presence of Native American mascots. The results described in the review include, quote, in particular, lower self-esteem, lower community worth, less capacity to generate achievement-related possible selves, and greater levels of negative effect, end quote. I present this information because often these mascots are written off as, quote, harmless, and blame is somehow put on the person who takes offense rather than the person who is offended. I also share it because I know that if you were wearing something that offended your friend or caused them to feel bad about themselves, you would change. And if someone was wearing something that offended you, difficult as it may be to say something, you would speak up. So here's your homework. Next time you encounter a mascot, whether at your school or in a video game or on a national team, stop and ask yourself about it. Where does this name come from? What does the logo look like? Is there anything about it that upsets you? Could there be anything about it that could upset someone else? Because of the color of their skin? Or their gender? Or their religion? Or their ethnicity? Or their identity? You are spending time stepping into someone else's shoes, and that's always a great way to begin exploring a different perspective. I'm Matthew, and this is Worth Noting. Worth Noting is written and produced by me, Matthew Winner. Audio production is by Chad Michael Snavely and the team at Sound On Studios. Our executive producer is Jelani Memory. And this show was brought to you by a kid's podcast about. Listen to other podcasts made for kids just like you by visiting akidsco.com. everyone, Ari here. I'm so glad you're here with us listening to this podcast. But today, I wanted to share some fantastic book news. We have a whole bunch of new books in our Kids Book About series shipping soon. And the topics include boredom, identity, leadership, and more. Check them out and pre-order a copy for your home, a friend, or a library by visiting akidsbookabout.com. 